Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Miss Charmaine just coming at you with a video um, for this afternoon. Um, so if we're looking at this afternoon's work, we are doing some more work with hanger diagrams. And let's take a look back at what we did in class today. So first thing we did was what did we notice? What do we wonder about these two pairs of socks? How are they different? How are they alike? Then we went through our learning targets, which I'm going to go through in a moment. And then we're looking at these hanging blocks, right? And we were looking at taking off different shapes from each side. And did it maintain that equity? Because when we're looking at a hanger diagram, we use these as sort of um, examples of looking at and talking about equations, right? So when we have these shapes here and we have it's a straight line at top, we remember that means that they are equal. The values are the same on both sides. Um, when we take things off from, when we take different amounts off of, from each side is when we lose that maintain, uh, maintaining of equity. So let's take a look at our learning targets and move into the afternoon work for today. So the afternoon work for today is I can add or remove blocks from a hanger and keep the hanger balanced. So we're going to be looking at different moves that we can do to make sure that those hangers maintain balance and stay equal to one another. Next is I can represent balanced hangers with equations. So then we're going to be taking hanger diagrams and we're going to be writing equations for those guys. It's going to be pretty cool. So let's take a look at slide number seven. Okay, so slide number seven, we have this hanger diagram here. And if you look at it, you'll, you'll be like, oh my gosh, Mr. Main, why are there so many boxes around these things? So the one thing that I did here was I put these text boxes in here so that you can actually go in and label how much some of these are going to be worth. Um, if we don't know, we might have to put a variable in, but we're going to be labeling all of these shapes. So that's why there's boxes around all of these shapes on this hanger diagram. So it tells us some information. Okay. So it tells us triangles weigh three grams and circles weigh six grams. So now what I want you to do is on your slideshow, I need you to put that information that they just told us in there. So let me show you what I want you to do. So when you, I want you to go back to your slideshow and I want you to label all of your triangles as three and all of your um, circles as six. So I want you to take two minutes right now to flip back and label all of those weights on those um, those shapes. I'm going to stay here. You're going to head over there and label your shapes and come back. Actually, I'm going to give us a minute because I don't think we need a full two minutes to type this. So we're going to take one minute to label our shapes, and then you can come on back and wait for me to give you some directions. Taking another 20. Okay, here we go. Let's come back together. Everybody, come on back to um, this slideshow so that we can check our work. Okay? So, um, let me just close that out. Sorry, guys. Um, let me just close that out. Um, so, if we look, I labeled all of our triangles three and our circles six. So now I want us to take another minute to decide and label some other things. So if we don't know what these X's, I mean, these, um, these squares are worth, we have these boxes here and we don't know what they're worth. And we talked about this in class. When we don't know what something is worth, we're going to label it as X because we don't know what it is, right? So I want you to take one minute right now to go back to your slideshow and label all your squares as X. I don't know why my camera just turned off, but 
guys don't get to see my beautiful face. Okay, we're taking another 10 seconds. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at this guy here. So if we come on back, we it tells us we need to find the weight of a square on hanger A. Okay, so if I know that... Um, this uh, left side here, or maybe, yes, left side here, is equal to 3666 plus x. I'm going to need to use a calculator to um, calculate that. So 3 plus um, 6 plus 6 plus 6. 3 plus 6 plus 6. Oh, wait, let me go back plus 6 plus 6 equals 21. So we know that we can condense all of those circles to 21. So I can say 21 plus, ooh, but I have an x here, plus x is going to be equal to, because it's equal on top, it's flat on top here, so that means we can use that equal sign in between them. So then if I look at the other side, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5x, so 5x is 5x, plus this one circle that we know is equal to 6. Oh, goodness. So... I have this guy right here. Let me make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. We need to find the weight of the square. So if we say that, oh goodness, we have, there are a number of ways that we can actually go about solving this guy. So if we want to find the weight of one of the squares, we could actually just sort of go like this and we can say to ourselves, oh, hey, I have two, I have a square on one side, one square on the other side. I can cancel one of those out because if I cancel one square from one side, one square from the other side, that means I'm still maintaining equity. And now I have no squares left on my left side and I can just calculate what is my um, what is my, um, we're going to copy this guy down here into the equation piece because it is important, okay? So if I come in here, I can cancel out two of my squares on each side to maintain the equity, and I can say 3 plus 6 is 9 plus 6 more is 15. Um, and I can actually go like this guy here, cancel out some of those circles, and I can say 6 and 6 is 12 is 15, so 15 is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4x. Okay, so I have 15 is equal to 4x, and if I enter that down, I can say to myself, oh, geez, I need to get my x by itself. That 4 is attached through what operation? Oh my gosh, you're right! It's multiplication. So the way that I get rid of multiplication is by dividing by 4 on each side. Yes! Oh my goodness, you guys are brilliant. Beyond brilliant. And when I divide by 4, I'm going to get a decimal. So when I type that into my calculator, 15 divided by 4. Uh, wrong thing. Oh, wrong thing. Oh goodness, Mr. Me! Um, 15 divided by or I get, you know, I get 3.75. You can write it at, you can write it one of two ways. You can say 3.75 is equal to x, or you can say um, 15 fourths is equal to x. Okay? So we're maintaining, we're trying to figure out this uh, 
weight here by canceling out the same amount on each side. So I have one square on the left side, so I can cancel one out on the other side to maintain that equity. We're simplifying here, people. I have one circle on the left. I can cancel out one circle on the right. Boop, 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 maintains equity. Equalize your, find the totals here, and then solve to find your value of x. So the equation, the overall equation for this guy right here, if we look at it and we count all of our pieces together, we can say to ourselves the equation for this guy is going to be equal to 21 because that's what we get when we add up these values that we know. So 21 plus an x is equal to, because it's flat on top, x, 5x, if you add them all together, plus 6. Okay? So that was how we're going to solve this guy here. Um, if we, let me just get this guy here. Can't get it to fall perfectly on top. That's awkward. Um, if we come down to slide number eight now, what we're going to do on slide number eight is I'm going to give you, listen, I'm going to give you um, five working minutes to try to find the weight of the Pentagon on hangar B. Okay. So I'm giving you five working minutes to label the pieces we know. The triangles are three, the circles are six. I want you to calculate the weight of that pentagon on this hanger. Take five working minutes right now, please. You're doing great. We're at two minutes and 54. Wonderful, wonderful. We're down to two.